Well, all right, now we're ready to take apart the uh, reverse high clutch. Uh, first thing I've got to do is just like the other one, take out this snap ring with a screwdriver. Well, I've got the snap ring off now and got the clutches out, as you can see. And I found something a little bit interesting. Um, that used to be a friction disc. And as you can see, they're completely down to the steel, which is not good. And there's three of them instead of four. Now, I'm going to see later on if I can finagle some things around and get four in there because that would obviously be better than three because three didn't hold up. Um, but we'll get back to that later when I start putting her back together. Uh, right now I've got to take two C-clamps and push this down and uh, take off a little snap ring and then I can pull the piston out. Well, as you can see, I've got it compressed. It's kind of a uh, tricky thing to do, but <clears throat> I got her all done. Got the snap ring off. Uh, they make a tool to do this, but I don't have it, and I ain't going to buy it. So there it is. Now I can release these clamps and pull her all out. Well, I've got the spring out and the piston out. I must admit it was a little bit hairy there for a minute because the C-clamp wants to slide off, both of them do, when you're compressing or loosening it up, so, you know, there's a chance that this thing could fly off and hit you in the face, <laughs> but with the proper tool it wouldn't happen, but again, I'm cheap. So now that I got that all out, there's a uh, another seal that rides in there, just like the last one, another seal there, replace those, clean all this up, and then we can start putting it back together. Alright, got new seals on the piston. Uh, they're all installed. I got the piston set in there. It was just like the uh, the other one. And just lube it up and slowly turn and push. And it'll go in. Be real careful of the lip seal. Uh, I've got the spring sitting in there. And there's the spring retainer. Now i got to take it over to the vise and put C-clamps on it to compress it back down. I can put that snap ring in there to hold it in place. And then uh, we can start working with the clutches. Well, I got her in finally. Uh, you can kind of see what I mean about it. These uh, C-clamps wanting to slide off to either side. And it uh, kind of bends up the plate. But it's in. So now I can take the clamps off and uh, continue. Alright, I've had my uh, clutches soaking for 15 minutes. Well, longer than that. But basically, uh, we're ready to put them in. And I'll show you how... They want you to measure the clearance. Start out with a uh, steel plate and then put a friction plate in, a steel plate on top of it. And just keep doing that until you've got your <coughs> original clutch pack in there, which mine was three, which I'm not really happy about, but we'll get to that in a minute. And then you take this uh, wavy spring plate, stick it on top. And then put the uh, pressure plate in and put your snap ring in and go ahead and measure your clearance. should be between 25 and 50 thousandths. Now, in the book it says something about having two friction plates, but it doesn't make any sense to me, so I'm not going to do it. And it doesn't matter because I'm going to take all these out and try to sneak in four clutch plates instead of just the three. That way it'll give me a little more uh, a little more gripping power. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this little spring plate. It's just there to uh, try to make the shift softer, softer. So that's gone. And I'll put my plates in and go ahead and add another plate and another friction and put the pressure plate in and see what I get for a measurement. Well, I added another clutch pack in there, took that out, put my pressure plate in, and uh, there wasn't enough clearance to get the snap ring in. I was just a tiny bit shy, so I'm going to have to take this snap ring, which is a little bit thinner, just a tiny, tiny bit, which I took out of an AOD, <clears throat> and I'm going to have to combine that, I believe, with a thinner steel 
clips that I can get out of the used ones that I have for the forward clutch and I'm going to put it back in, measure it and see if that'll, if that'll give me the clearance I need. Now it's kind of hard to tell and I know you can't see it in the video but uh, the forward clutch plates are just a little bit smaller, about 12,000 smaller than the uh, reverse high plates. So what I'm going to do is throw this little one in. It's a decent looking one. And put that in. And go ahead and I'm also turning this pressure plate upside down because there's a nice big groove in it. And that used to be the surface that rode on there. So I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to put the snap ring on and measure it and see what happens. Well I went ahead and put it in there and measured it and uh, I'm running about 20 thousandths clearance and it needs to be more than that so I'm going to go ahead and put one more thin steel in and measure it one more last one more time and hopefully that'll be enough. Now uh, what I'm doing as I put these in is you'll notice there's a tooth missing on either side of these steel clutch plates. So what I'm doing is I'm lining them all up uh, to help evacuate the fluid between the friction disc which has, which has these slots and the steel disc. That's just uh, a little thing that helps extend life. It's not important. It's not necessary at least. So that's just what I'm doing you know as I'm building it just to make sure it uh, doesn't blow up on me or nothing. So we'll go ahead and we'll finish this up and measure it see what happens. Well I've been at it for a while now and uh, I think I got it all figured out. Uh, got it back together. I got about 40 thousand clearance between the uh, ring here and the pressure plate, so I think I'm good there. Uh, just to recap, I uh, removed this uh, little spring deal and I added another clutch pack to it. I used three of the steels from the forward clutch and one that was for this clutch and I've got all four frictions for this clutch in here so I think it'll work I guess there's only one way to find out and that's put it in the car and try it so this one's all done next one will be the pump <laughs> 